Since Intel exited the NUC game, I've been looking for a replacement. Geekom's Mini Air 12 was one of my favorite budget mini PCs of 2023, and it was also the closest thing I'd seen to rival Intel's NUC 11 Essential. So I was pretty keen to check out the updated Mini Air 12 featuring Intel's Alder Lake N CPU. This mini might look like the exact same box, but there have been a few changes worth mentioning which help make it even better. I'd love to tell you all about it right now, but bills have to be paid. So we'll get into it right after this message. Are you looking for a way to safely and quickly transfer files and apps to a new PC? Well, say hello to Ease Us To Do PC Trans, a simple to use app that can help you transfer programs from one PC to another or create a full backup of your computer. Try it for free with the link in the video description. What was so impressive about the Geekom Mini Air 11 was how much it mimicked an Intel NUC, which was my first introduction to mini PCs and holds a special place in my still beating heart. Well, I can't hear it, but I assume it's still beating. And if you thought Intel's NUC 11 Essential was great and are looking for a successor, then I have good news, my friend. This is by far the closest NUC style mini around. It even looks very close to a seventh gen NUC with excellent build quality to boot. Yep, I'm really impressed how solid the plastic is on the Mini Air 12 and the bottom plate is metal. It's also one of the rare cases where a full size SD card reader is included. Another cool change over the Mini Air 11 is that all the USB ports have been upgraded to 10 gigabit. And now that I have a USB-C monitor, I was able to confirm that the USB-C port on the back of the Mini Air 12 does indeed support power delivery and display. Something else you don't see every day is a mini display port, which I like, but never really hit off in the mini PC space for whatever reason. Together with the HDMI and USB-C ports on the Mac, this mini can handle three displays at the same time, up to 4K resolution. The LAN jack hasn't changed and is still Realtek Gigabit, but the Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip has been upgraded to a Realtek 8852BE Wi-Fi 6, which is great. That was one of my complaints from last time. So you might be wondering if anything else has changed inside. Well, another one of my gripes with the Mini Air 11 was that while it had two DDR4 memory slots, only one was occupied with the pre-build, which cut graphics performance substantially. Not a problem with older Lake N chips. They only support single channel memory and the Mini Air 12 features a single DDR5 stick. For storage, a Gen 3 M.2 NVMe slot is all that's available but it has basic cooling thanks to the thermal pad connected to the metal plate. And the Wi-Fi chip is soldered on instead of M.2. So how much does it cost? Well, around 237 US dollars for the 512GB storage, 16GB memory pre-build after using the 5% off coupon Geekon provided me and I've linked in the video description. That brings it in line with other premium N100 minis such as the B-Link EQ12 and Minix Aero, both which are also very good. However, just like with Intel's NUC before it, Geekom offers a three year warranty, which is pretty rare in the mini PC space. So what do you get in the box for your coinage? Well, there's a monitor mount, HDMI cord and power supply. Pretty standard stuff really. What you also get is Windows 11 Pro pre-installed and the OS came up clean after my scans. The Mini Air 12 doesn't allow you to skip the Microsoft account login during setup. So to avoid that, don't connect to the internet when you first turn on the mini. Press Shift plus F10 at the same time on your keyboard, click into the command window and type OOBE forward slash bypass NRO and press enter. After it restarts, go through the setup process and choose I don't have internet to continue on. Or if you want to give Microsoft the middle finger and run Linux instead, I'm happy to report Ubuntu worked fine when I booted it off a USB. A common mistake I see people make when buying a mini PC is to only look at the CPU it comes with and thinking they're all pretty much the same. Unfortunately, no. They can vary wildly in performance. But luckily, Geekom's Mini Air 12 has full Intel N100 performance out of the box and without any BIOS tweaks needed. While it didn't top the charts, the differences between the top performer are small so it's not worth mentioning. Oh, you still wanna know? Okay, okay, if you insist. In single core, the Mini Air 12 is behind the top performer by 2%. 
I've also got the Mini Air 11 for its last showing as a comparison. You'll see some big differences in the benchmarks between the two. In multi-core, the Mini Air 12 is only 1% behind the top performer. So nothing meaningful there. Something new being added to the benchmarks is Geekbench, which tests various CPU workloads. Here's the result for the Mini Air 12. I'll be throwing it into a chart once there's data from more mini PCs. The video encoding results and 3D Mark graphics show a very good performer. Not the best recorded, but not far off. Minis with DDR5 memory are slightly faster than their DDR4 counterparts, and the Mini Air 12 is performing without any issues and is far ahead of the Mini Air 11. Geekom includes a 512GB Wadposit NVMe storage drive, which wins the Worst Brand Name Award. Congrats, we've hit rock bottom. It's Gen 3 and has full X4 bandwidth on the M.2 slot, which is very uncommon on older Lake Minis. While it isn't the fastest Gen 3 drive tested, the Wadposit is plenty fine for this mini PC. Intel's N100 CPU shines for multimedia workloads such as 1080p video editing, 4K 60 video playback, and that sort of thing. Gaming ability is low, but some esports and older titles can run on it. With each review, I try to add something new, and I had a request to try Roblox Frontlines on an N100, which is a Call of Duty clone that has higher performance requirements than regular Roblox. With this game, you're looking at a wide ranging frame rate of 25 to 50 frames per second. Not ideal for this kind of twitchy shooter. Intel's N100 makes for a good PS2 slash GameCube slash Wii emulation box with plenty of games running full speed at 720p. One area Geekom minis are lacking is in the BIOS options, and this one is no different. There's very little to choose from. You can change the fan mode, the S3 state, and that's about it. The Mini Air 12 is one of the more power efficient N100 minis around. Only 8 watts for idle power draw, and 29 watts for maximum. And looking at the max CPU temp, it's clear that the Mini Air 12 is king of cooling. The AU Star R1 doesn't count. It's a ginormous mini PC in comparison and is much, much louder than Geekom's effort. Yep, Geekom's Mini Air 12 is a very quiet mini PC and one of the best in this lineup. Any form of cooling for NVMe storage does wonders, and the Mini keeps temperatures in check even with a full X4 Gen 3 drive. Alright then, let's wrap it up. This Mini PC has impressive build quality. The cooling is top notch. It comes with a 3 year warranty, and the port selection is great. But what would make it even better? Well, while the plastic is great quality, I sure do miss the metal case from the Intel NUC 11 Essential. Another M.2 storage slot would have been awesome. And of course, there should be more options in the BIOS. The brand name of the NVMe drive is Wadposit, which is unacceptable. I kid, I kid. So, there it is, the Geekom Mini Air 12. An excellent budget mini PC, as you'd hope for the dollars, and in a league of its own with its great cooling. Two out of my three main complaints from the Mini Air 11 have been fixed. And I like this mini so much, that it's going to replace my existing N100 unit. Geekom's Mini Air 12 is exactly what I wanted as an Intel NUC 11 essential replacement. Finally! So does it meet your needs? If it does, you can check it out using the links in the video description, but if you're looking for much more Intel CPU performance, I have a video on Geekom's IT13 you can check out right here. Cheers!